Okay, guys, today we are going to revisit this idea of inverse trig and circular functions. We've talked a little bit about this and done a little bit of this in the calculator, but we're going to get a little bit more in depth today. So, an example of something you should learn about today is cosine to the negative 1, negative square root of 2 over 2. So, just again to remind you, this does not equal 1 over cosine to negative square root of 2 over 2. So go ahead and forget that because this is negative 1 as in inverse, not negative 1 as in put me on the bottom. So what this question is asking, and by the way, another way to say cosine negative 1, cosine inverse, is arc cosine. And that one kind of helps you remember what it's asking. It's saying give me the arc whose cosine is negative square root of 2 over 2. Or it could be give me the angle whose cosine is negative square root of 2 over 2. So we're just looking for where around the unit circle does the cosine or the x value have a value of negative square root of 2 over 2. So make sure you write down this question. Where and your answer might come in degrees or radians depending on the question. Where if it asks, if the question says trigonometric, that's degrees. If it says circular, that's radian. So that's how you know what mode to be in based on the question. Um, but where, back to my question, where in degrees or radians does cosine equal negative square root of 2 over 2? That's the question you need to answer. So let's just look at our unit circle over here. Cosine is my x value, and it's negative, so I'm going to be on the left. And negative square root of 2 over 2 is right here. So the answer to this question is 135 degrees. So what we would say is cosine inverse of negative square root of 2 over 2 equals negative or equals 135 degrees. Or we could say arc cosine of negative square root of 2 over 2 equals 135 degrees. So these are going to require a really strong unit circle knowledge and the ability to go both ways, not just to say what's the cosine of 135, but also to say where is cosine equal to this value. So that brings me to my next point. This value, 135 degrees, isn't the only place that has a cosine of negative square root of 2 over 2. There's actually one more right here on the unit circle at 225 degrees, but there are also infinitely many more. Okay, where does, you know, all possibilities now I've got 135. I've got um, 225. And then if I go around the circle any, you know, a full time from any of those, I'm going to land back on this same spot. So that's another angle that would have a cosine of negative square root of 2 over 2. So I could sum this up like 135 degrees plus a full revolution of the circle. Let's call that 360n. This n is understood to be an integer value, meaning you could go 360 degrees, one full circle in either direction. So that could be 135 plus 360. It could be 135 plus two 360s plus three 360s. So it could be minus 360, minus um, two 360s, and so on. So um, I need to add in my 225 plus 360 degrees in. This, this combination of expressions covers every single possibility of places that have a cosine of negative square root of 2 over 2. And just um, to be clear, that, plus, that 360n means go around the circle as many times as you want and end right back up on the same spot. And there's your, um, there's your place again, just another name for that same angle. All right. So, what, what's the um, question asking? Do I want to know just one of these values or do I want to know them all? Here's how you tell. Call this part just one value or all of them. And how you determine that is by the question. All right? If they want the function version, and I'll talk about the graph in just a minute. 
But if they want just the one main value, or the value that your calculator would give you, then that's going to be a capital C in cosine inverse, or a capital A in arc cosine. So cosine inverse, negative square root of 2 over 2, and capital A arc cosine, negative square root of 2 over 2, that's asking you for that one value the main one, the first one you come to. All right. So out of all the infinite ones that we just described in that rectangle, 135 is the one they're asking us for. Lowercase cosine inverse, lowercase arc cosine, those are what we just had right up there. All of that. So your answer depends on the the capital or lowercase nature of the question. All right? Capital is for a function. Let's look at the graph of cosine for just a second. Cosine starts at the top at one, and when you get to 360 degrees, it's completed its full revolution. By the time you get to 90, it's 0. 180, it's negative 1. 270, 360. And it goes on and on forever in both directions. We are doing the inverse of that graph right there with these arc cosine and cosine inverse questions. So the actual function or relation that we're dealing with is this. Remember when we talked about inverses, it flips over the line y equals x. So this never-ending squiggly graph that goes forever left and right, when it rotates over y over x, this point is going to come down here. This point is going to stay on the line. And what you're going to end up with is a never-ending up and down squiggle. Forgive my roughness of that graph. But this is the graph of lowercase arc cosine. All right, and as you can see, this graph, if it squiggles forever up and down, is a multiple time violator of the vertical line test. Okay. It, violates the vertical line test infinitely many times. So that's the distinction between capital letter and lowercase letter. Do we want just the one point, or do we want them all? And that brings up another good question. If I just want one, how do I know which one to give? It's not always the first one when moving from zero around to 360. So here's a rule. All right? Basically, what this rule is going to do is it's going to take this graph and it's going to cut it off so that you you don't violate the vertical line test. So for instance, I'm just going to look at this portion of that graph. So I'm going to cover the full top half of the unit circle, but I'm not going to let those red curves arch backwards and start to repeat themselves to where I fail, fail the vertical line test. Okay, there's good pictures you can look at in your book. Let's just get straight to the point. Which one do I use? All right, on your graph, let's just do a blank unit circle. For certain ones, the value, this is technically the range. Okay, these are the possible y values, not the domain, but the range. For three of our functions, the range is going to be the first and second quadrants. So anything from 0 degrees to 180 degrees, or from 0 to pi, that's where your one unique answer is going to come from, come from for cosine, secant, and cotangent. All right, so it's cosine, it's 1 over the cosine, and it's the cosine over sine. These are kind of the ones that group together in the cosine group. For your other three, the one answer you need to give 
needs to come from the first and fourth quadrants. So for sine, <coughs> cosecant, for tangent, your answer needs to be from negative 90 degrees to 90 degrees and from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So back to that question, which answer should I give out of all of these infinitely many answers? If it's an uppercase function call, then give the one for that particular function that exists in these cutoff points. And let's kind of think about why. Why would we want to choose sine from the first and fourth, fourth quadrants? Well, here's the reason. Sine repeats itself up on top. Okay, right here, use 30 degrees. Sine of 30 degrees equals one half. Well, over here, sine of 150 degrees also equals one half. So if I say what's arc sine, there are two values in the top in the first two quadrants. That's why I only use this red area over here for a sine call because the sine, the height, does not repeat itself anywhere over here. Okay, the left to rightness does not repeat itself anywhere over here. All right, so that's kind of the reasons why, but more importantly, I guess that's just as important, but make sure you understand, if you get a capital letter, you're looking for one of these, all right? And there's one more style of question that your book will ask. These are kind of neat little questions that you don't, it looks very complicated, but you don't have to um, use a calculator to solve them. So this is asking us for the cosine of some angle. Remember, this is all just an angle. And what do we know about that angle? It's the angle whose sine equals negative 8 17 And remember, a capital A arc sine only exists over here, because that's our range for sine. So let's just draw that angle first. We don't know exactly where it exists, but we do know, since sine is negative, it needs to be down low, in this case, the fourth quadrant. So what you do is you make a little you know, angle in your unknown spot. I'll call it theta. Another name for this can be theta. I don't know exactly where it goes, but I do know some things about it. I know that if I make a triangle with my angle in the x-axis, this angle's sine is negative 8 seventeenths. So you have to go back to your geometry trig, your right triangle trig. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite, here's the 8. And since we're going down, that's negative 8. I know that, ne that lengths aren't usually called negative, but let's just leave it as negative for a minute. And then that means this is a hypotenuse, so opposite over hypotenuse. Now, 8, 15, 17 is one of your nice, neat Pythagorean triples, which means this side length is 15. So now we don't know, you know, you could do some, the arctan of 8 fifteenths to get the angle, but we don't need to do that. All we need to know is the cosine of this angle. So the cosine theta should equal adjacent over hypotenuse, again using your right triangle trig. So that means adjacent to that angle is 15, hypotenuse is 7. And since we're going to the right, that's a positive cosine value because cosine is the x value. It's not going left, it's going right. So that's how you answer this seemingly difficult question by setting up a little angle, using your right triangle trig, your Pythagorean the theorem, and solving. I, I kind of like those problems. They're neat little ones that look really difficult that you can solve. So there is our section on inverse trig. I, I hope you've enjoyed as much as I have young out. Oh.